This video is going to continue to look at our quadratic function. And remember before we had looked at the standard form. And we said the standard form for the quadratic function was f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And we said a tells us whether the parabola is going to open up or down. h and k was representing the vertex. So that was really convenient to find the vertex in the direction of our parabola. Now what happens though if we have the following function f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 16. How can we write this in standard form? Well to do that the easy part is this is a perfect square trinomial which means if we factor this uh, if we try to factor this way, we know x times x is x squared. And then for 16, we could simply write 4 times 4. And these are both plus and plus. So we could certainly write this function as x plus 4 squared. So from this, we could easily identify the vertex. So we could realize here the vertex then is going to be negative 4, 0, because again, there's nothing added on, so that's understood to be a plus 0. And then we want to determine which way this is going to open. Our a values understood to be a 1, so we know that it's going to open up. And then we could continue on from there if we want to uh, find the other pieces. Now, what happens if we have our function f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. Well, this trinomial we're not able to factor. So we want to be able to rewrite this in standard form. So how can we write this function in standard form? Well, first of all, in order to write this in standard form, we're going to have to complete the square. And if we go step by step, this is really not that difficult. Now, in order to complete the square, we have to make sure that this number here, the coefficient of your x squared, needs to be a 1. So the first step is we need to make this coefficient a 1. In order to do that, I want to look at grouping the first two terms together, the 2x squared minus 4x. And I'm going to factor out the 2. So if I factor out the 2, we now have x squared minus 2x. And then we have the plus 1. We're going to leave that here on the outside of the parentheses because we're only factoring the 2 out of the first two terms, the x squared term and the x to the first term. So now the reason we want to do that is because now this coefficient of the x squared is a 1. So this here must equal 1 so that we can complete the square. Okay, So now the steps for completing the square, we're just going to bring down the 2. That's still our factored out piece. I'm going to bring down the x squared minus 2x. And I'm going to leave a little space here because we want to add on something to complete the square. And then we still have the plus 1. So the question now becomes, what do we need to add on so that we have a perfect square like the example above, where x squared plus 8x plus 16, this turns out to be a perfect square, x plus 4 quantity squared. So in other words, when you factor, you get x plus 4 times x plus 4. So we want to do the same thing here. Now the steps for completing the square, for right here, we take half of our b value. Now keep in mind when we have, let me rewrite this part, we have x squared minus 2x. This is understood to be 1. So here a is equal to 1, our b value is the coefficient of the x which is a negative 2. So in order to complete the square we're going to take half of the b value. Okay. So in this case we're going to take half of our negative 2, okay, and then we're going to square it. 
So then we need to square that quantity. So for us here, we take half of a negative 2, which is going to be a negative 1. And then we square the negative 1, which makes it a positive 1. So therefore, this is what we're going to add on. So we add a plus 1 here. So this is going to make this a perfect square. Now, we know that we can't just come into a problem, add numbers without doing something else. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky part here. We put a 1 here, and where's the 1? The 1 is on the inside of the parentheses. Now, because we put the 1 on the inside of the parentheses, that 1 is eventually, we can kind of think we're not going to do this, but the 1 is being multiplied by this 2 that's out front that we factored. So, we really didn't add 1 to the problem. We really added 2 times 1, which is a positive 2. Now, we want that to essentially cancel out so that we're not changing the problem. Now, normally you'd say, well, if we're going to add 2 to this side, then we would go over here to the other side and add 2. But we don't want to really put anything on the other side of the equation. We want it to remain f of x. So essentially, we're going to cancel this 2 out by doing the opposite. Because we added 2 here, then we're going to go out on the outside and subtract 2 away. And essentially, that's canceling out uh, the 2 that we added so that we're not changing the actual problem. So now we can bring this down, bring down the 2, and now the x squared minus 2x plus 1 becomes a perfect square. And that's going to be x minus 1 squared. So essentially, that's x minus 1 times x minus 1. Now, the easy way to factor this, where did I come up with the minus 1 here? Well, this minus 1 is coming from the value that we got when we took half. So this minus 1 is actually coming from when we took half of our b value. The half of our b value over here was a negative 1. So this is x minus 1. If the half of the b value was a positive 4, then we would put plus 4 here. So that's a quick and easy way to factor a perfect square when you're completing the square here. So this is x minus 1 squared. Then we have 1 minus 2, so that's going to be a negative 1. So here we have our standard form, f of x equals 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 1. Now that we have standard form, we can easily find the vertex. So we can find the vertex, which would be, again, we're using uh, the 1 here and the negative 1. So that's going to be 1, negative 1. So remember, this is the h, so it's x minus h. So there's already a 1 there, so it's going to be a positive 1. And then we can determine which way the graph is going to open. And that's based on our a value. Well, our a value is a positive 2, so it's going to open up. We can then find the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals our x value, which is the 1 here. So x equals 1. And then we can identify any x intercepts. And we can find the x intercepts by looking at uh, where does the graph cross the x axis. So we can take our function f of x equals 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 1. And we're simply going to set that equal to 0. So I'm going to add the 1. So we get 2 times x minus 2 squared equals 1. Divide by the 2. So it's x minus 2 squared equals 1 half. And then we're going to take the square root. And keep in mind that's going to be plus or minus the square root. So we have x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half. And to get x by itself now, we need to add 2. So that's going to be x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 1 half. Now we could leave it in this form and write that answer this way. That would be our two x-intercepts. Or if you prefer, we can actually 
work this out and we could say that x is going to equal to you enter it into the calculator 2 plus the square root of 1 half you're going to get approximately 1.7 and if you type in 2 minus the square root of 1 half you're going to get approximately a negative 0.3 so you're going to end up with your x-intercept as 1.70 and then a negative 0.3 comma 0 And you could always graph this if you want, but there's that gives you your vertex. We know it's opening up. Axis symmetry is 1. And it's going to cross through 1.7 approximately and a negative 0.3 on the x-axis. All right, here we have our next example. f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 12. And once again, we want to rewrite this in standard form. So we have to complete the square. And in order to do that, once again, we have to have this coefficient of the x squared must be a 1. So we're going to group the first two terms together again. And we need to factor out this negative so that we have a positive x squared. So if we factor out the negative sign, then that means the x squared will become a positive x squared. And then the plus 8x becomes a negative 8x and then we have the minus 12 is on the outside. Now the reason we want to do this is because completing the square we need this to be a positive 1x squared. That coefficient has to be a 1. So now if we go to the point of completing the square we have the minus the x squared minus 8x and I'm going to leave the space here for adding on our number for the completing the square. So now if we have x squared minus 8x, the negative 8 is our b value. So remember, we have to take half of the b value, so it's negative 8 divided by 2, and then we're simply going to square that. So negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4, and if we square a negative 4, we get a positive 16. So that means we have to come over here and add 16 to the problem. Now, once again, the 16 is on the inside of the parentheses, so that means this negative is being multiplied by the 16, so we're actually subtracting 16. So we want to do the opposite so that can cancel out. So on the outside, we're going to add the 16. So that way, the negative 16, the positive 16 cancels, and we are not changing the equation. So now we have the negative x squared minus 8x plus 16 is now a perfect square, which is going to factor to x minus 4. And keep in mind, the negative 4 is coming from where we took half of the b value. So that's where this negative 4 comes from. And then on the outside, negative 12 plus 16 is a positive 4. So if this is our function, f of x equals a negative x minus 4 quantity squared plus 4. This is now standard form. So from this, we can easily then identify the vertex. So it's the h and k. So that means we have here a positive 4. Remember, x minus 4, so this is positive 4. On the outside, we have a 4, so the vertex is 4, 4. And if we actually want to plot this, that means we're going to go over 4 and up 4. And we have the vertex. And then we can determine which way the graph is going to open. And we know that it's going to open down. And because we know the graph is going to open down, we know that it's going to eventually cross somewhere on the x-axis. And now we can look at the axis of symmetry. And that's going to be x equals your x-coordinate, which is x equals 4. And then our x-intercepts. And we know that this graph is going to come down and cross somewhere on the x-axis over here and over here. So we should have two of these. And if we take the equation, 
which is a negative x minus 4 squared plus 4, set that equal to 0. And if we move over the 4, we get a negative 4. The negative out front here, we're going to multiply both sides by a negative, so that becomes a positive x minus 4 squared, and then a positive 4. And to get rid of the square, we're going to take the square root. So that leaves us with x minus 4 equals, don't forget, this would be plus or minus 4. Whoops, plus or minus 2 if we take the square root. The square root of 4 is 2, so we get plus or minus 2. And then we have to add the 4 to both sides. So we would get x equals 4 plus or minus 2. So we get x equals 4 plus 2, which is 6, and 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. So therefore, we have 6, 0, and 2, 0 as our x-intercepts. So that means here at 2 and at 6, our graph is going to cross the x-axis. So once again, we can easily find the vertex, the x-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, remember, that goes right through the vertex here at x equals 4. And we simply took the negative x squared plus 8x minus 12. We rewrote this into standard form. And once we have standard form, we were easily able to identify the vertex. Now, I want to look at, notice here I have the exact same problem, but I want to look at this a little bit differently. Notice the previous example, we wrote it in standard form to find the vertex. Well, I want to show you a formula. If you have this negative x squared plus 8x minus 12, if it's in this form and we want to find the vertex, then there's an optional way we can find the vertex. And we can do that, we can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by simply using negative b over 2a. So if we do that, what we're really finding here, this is the h, right? That is the, our vertex, remember, is our h and k. So to find the h value, the x-coordinate, you simply take negative b over 2a. So up here, that means that negative x squared, a is equal to a negative 1, b is equal to 8, and c is equal to a negative 12. So if I'm looking for our h or the x value, I'm going to take negative b, so that's a negative 8, over 2 times a, and what's my a value? A negative 1. So that means we're going to have a negative 8 divided by a negative 2, which is a positive 4. So for the vertex, that tells me that the x value, the h, is equal to 4. So now, how do I find k? How do I find the y-coordinate? Well, if we know x is 4, all we have to do is plug the 4 in to the function. So that means we could find it by simply finding f of 4 is equal to the opposite of 4 squared plus 8 times 4 minus 12. So all we're doing is plugging the 4 in for x. So we end up with opposite. Notice the negative is not squared, so it's 4 squared, which is 16, but the negative makes it a negative 16, plus 8 times 4 is 32, minus our 12. So negative 16 plus 32 is 16, so then we have 16 minus 12, which is equal to 4. So that tells us f of 4 equals 4. Now really that means when x is 4, y equals 4, so then this gives us our k, or the y-coordinate for the vertex. So that's probably a little bit easier than having to rewrite this in standard form. And all we used here was the 
negative b over 2a. Now, what if we were also asked to find the x-intercepts? Well, there's a couple ways that we could do that. Uh, one way is we could simply take the function and set it equal to 0. Okay. And I would prefer at this case because that I don't like to deal with the negative x squared. I would probably multiply everything by negative 1. And that's so that we end up with a positive x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now, is this something that we can factor? Well, if this is a nice trinomial we can factor, it's going to be very easy. So let's see. x squared, that would simply be x times x. And how do we get 12? Well, we could always multiply 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So what combination is going to give me 12 but also give me the negative 8? It looks like it's going to be minus 2 and minus 6. So negative 2, negative 6 is a positive 12. Then we have a negative 2x, a negative 6x gives us the negative 8x in the middle. So now remember we're going to take each factor, x minus 2, set that equal to 0. Take the x minus 6, set that equal to 0. And we get x equals 2 and x equals 6. So we have 2, 0, and 6, 0 as our x intercepts. And if you notice, we had the vertex of 4, 4. 2 and 6 were the x intercepts. And up here, we had the exact same thing. Our vertex was 4, 4. x intercepts occurred at 6 and 2. So this is just another way that we could go about finding the vertex and x intercepts without rewriting this in standard form. Now, I want to continue to look at this. What happens if we take, again, the same problem? I just want to show you that if we have f of x equals, we had a negative x squared plus 8x minus 12. Now, another way we can find the x-intercepts, what if we're not able to factor this? Well, an alternate technique is if we can't factor this, we could use what's called the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula states that if you have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, then if you're looking for the x value, it's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And all of that is divided by 2a. And that will allow us to find our x value. So over here, that's what we're going to do. So if we use the quadratic formula, then we would have x equals, and it may help up here if we write this, then a is equal to negative 1, b is positive 8, and c is a negative 12. So we would end up with negative b, so that means we have a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times negative 1, which is our a, and c then is a negative 12. And this is all over 2 times a, where a is a negative 1. So if we simplify this, we have a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64. And be careful with your signs. We have a negative 4 times a negative 1 is 4. 4 times a negative 12 is a negative 48. And 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2 in the denominator. So now we have a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 48, which is 16. 
So then we can take negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4 over negative 2. So keep in mind, this is still finding our x value here. So really what this means is we end up with x equals negative 8 plus 4 over negative 2. And we have an x equals negative 8 minus 4 over negative 2. So we're going to get x equals negative 8 plus 4 is a negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2. And then we get negative 8 minus 4 is a negative 12 divided by negative 2, which is a positive 6. So once again, we get your x-intercepts as 2 and positive 6. So once again, we could use the quadratic formula here as a way to help us find the x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis. So if you're not able to factor it, you can always do that. And if you don't prefer that technique, just like we talked about earlier, we can always complete the square and rewrite the equation in standard form.